So in our fourth example, we are going to solve this very problem. Now this is an applied electricity examination question, 2011. And then we are to use superposition theorem to find the current flowing through the two ohms resistor. Now we are being asked to find the current contribution of the six volt battery. Now what this primarily means is that we want to use superposition theorem to find the current flowing through the two ohms resistor. However, we want to know the current contribution of the six volt battery, which means that we want to know the current that is flowing through the two ohms resistor when the six volt is acting alone. So basically, that is what we are going to do in this video. And at the end, I'm going to show you how you can solve this problem very quick during examination so that you end up not wasting a lot of time. So now let's begin with the solution. Now, because we want to use superposition theorem to find the current flowing through the two ohms resistor when the six volt is acting alone, then it means that we are going to deactivate the other sources and then we focus on the six volts. So we are going to make the six volts act alone. Now, if the six volts is acting alone, then we need to redraw the circuit. So we are going to have the six volts and then we have the one ohm resistor. And then because we have a voltage source here, then we are going to replace that with a short circuit. So we have that here. And then we also have the three ohms resistor and then because we still have a voltage source that is the five volts then we are going to have a short circuit and then we have the two ohm resistor so the current flowing through the two ohm resistor is what we have as i2 ohm prime now to find the current flowing through the two ohm resistor first of all we need to find the total resistance of the circuit and then we find the current produced by the six volts then we can use current division rule to find the current flowing through the two ohm resistor so basically that's what we are going to do now the total resistance for this particular circuit can be found by combining the three resistors now we realize that the one ohm resistor is in parallel with the three ohm resistor and then the one ohm resistor is also in parallel with the two ohm resistor and then the three ohm resistor is also in parallel with the two ohm resistor now these resistors are in parallel because whenever you take a loop you can go through that particular loop without passing through any other circuit element except those two resistors so if we take this loop then we have only two resistors the one ohm the three ohm when we take this big loop we have one ohm and then two ohm and then when we take this one we also have three and then two so they are connected in parallel so first of all let's combine the one and three and then we can add the two to it so we are going to have one parallel three or parallel two so that is going to be the total resistance so one parallel three is one times three divided by one plus three now one times three is three and then one plus three is four now this is equal to 0 0.75 ohms so that is for one parallel three so now let's add the two to it so we are going to have 0 0.75 parallel two so that's going to be 0 0.75 times two divided by 0 0.75 plus two 0 0.75 times two 
is equal to 1.5 and then 0 0.75 plus 2 is 2.75 so when you do the calculation you are going to get something around 0 0.5455 ohms so this is the total resistance for this particular circuit now we are going to find the current produced by the six volts so according to ohm's law we know v is equal to ir so we are going to make i the subject and then we have v divided by r in this case we have rt so our v is six volts so we have six divided by we have 0 0.5455 ohms. So I is going to be, now 6 divided by 0 0.5455 is equal to 10.999, which is equal to 11. So we have I to be 11 amperes. So that is the total current produced by the six volts now at this point 0 0.75 is the combination of one and three okay so we can redraw the circuit as we have the six volts and then we have one and three combined as 0 0.75 and then we have the two So at this point, we can use the current division rule to split the current. So we have current 11 amperes approaching this junction. And then we are interested in the current flowing through the 2 ohms resistor. That is I2 ohm prime. So using the current division rule, then I2 ohm prime is equal to this resistor the value of this resistor that is 0 0.75 divided by the sum of the two resistors so we have 0 0.75 plus 2 and then times the total current which is 11. so we are going to have 0 0.75 divided by 2 plus 0 0.75 is 2.75 times 11 so 0 0.75 divided by 2.75 times 11 is equal to 3 amperes so the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor when the 6 volt is acting alone is 3 amperes so now let's see how we can solve this problem very quick during examination so that we don't end up wasting a lot of time now in this question we had three voltage sources we had the six volts the seven volts and the five volts and then we also had three resistors which were the one the three and the two ohm resistors now we were interested in finding the current flowing through the two ohm resistor when the six volt was acting alone so like we did for the superposition, we are going to make the six volts act alone, which means that we are going to deactivate the two voltage sources, the seven and the five. So let's redraw the circuit. So we have six volts, we have one ohm, and then we have the short circuit. We have the 3 ohm resistor and then we have the 2 ohm resistor. Now we want to find the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. However, we realize that these three resistors are connected in parallel and then for parallel connection of resistors the same source voltage is applied across each of the three resistors. So to find the current flowing through the two ohm resistor, 
is basically i 2 ohm prime is equal to 6 over 2 which is equal to 3 amperes so this is how you can solve this problem very fast during examination so that you don't go through the steps in solving using superposition theorem you can just use the principle of ohm's law